Hey friends, Andy Jenkins here with Crosswinds Foundation for Faith and Culture and the Warrior Hope Podcast. Today on this episode, I'm going to introduce you to one of my friends. His name is Steph Oderkirk. He is a, well, he's a former uh, veteran in Air Force, former CEO of one of the businesses, one of the companies that got involved with Crosswinds very early on uh, in terms of these Warrior Hope projects and the films that we're having uh, completed and the films we're still uh, developing that are in production. And now he's, he's retired, but he has maintained that connection. And, and this is super important and it, it really highlights what we do on this podcast. Here it is, as I say, every single week, what we do is we connect veterans to their next mission. The most common obstacles that we see are these two right here. It is isolation and the unresolved hurts of the past, the unprocessed pain of the past. Here's why finding that mission matters. Your mission matters because you have a purpose. You were designed by God for some purpose that only you can fulfill. And there are people that are going to be impacted by what you do, by how you follow through after you find, after you determine what that mission is. Here's the people. First of all, it's going to be your family, then your friends, and then fellow service members. Those fellow service members are the people that had your six uh, and of course you had theirs in the service and they still need you and you still need them to connect to that next mission. Now, let, let me let you in on uh, what I really invite you to listen for. Staff was invited to come see the first film that we produced uh, to the premiere that was at a theater here in town in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, that is the film Invisible Scars about PTSD. And then he got involved with the second film, uh, Honoring the Code. You're, you're gonna see the poster from the film uh, in the back behind him if, if you're watching. If you're listening, you'll just have to trust me uh, that it's there. And then the third film uh, was actually being shot uh, this past fall, staff up in Dayton, Ohio, in that area, he actually hosted our crew uh, that was shooting at his home, <laughs> had meals for them ready after they returned every single day. You guys have met Eugene Cuevas. You've seen him on the podcast uh, here. He is uh, the, the man that is masterfully uh, weaving together all of those stories. Staff actually helped make connection on those stories. Uh, all that said, let me just roll right into the conversation. This is my friend, uh, one of our great great supporters and one of the people that is uh, the wind in the sails of the Crosswinds Foundation for Faith and Culture, Warrior Hope Movement, Staff Oda Kirk. Okay, so I'm here with Staff Oda Kirk. I, did, I, I said it right, didn't I? Like that, that name sounds really strong. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That, that name all actually sounds like you should be a Marvel superhero or something. Oh, thank you. I probably should have told that to my mom. Right. I, well, we, well, you know, I mean, you, you can still use that intro uh, forthgoing r right here. Uh, man, you guys have been really involved uh, almost since the beginning with the uh, Warriors on Mission, Warrior Hope, Centers of Hope, uh, the documentaries, efforts. Um, you personally, as well as you through your business. Um, tell me, bring me up to speed a little bit on how that happened, how you guys got involved. Well, that's good, but let me first say, I want to say the magic of editing because, uh, you know, whenever I talk, my fear is that I don't say enough, but my reality is I say too much. So you can cut me off at any time or edit this out. How's that sound? That, that sounds great. Well, <laughs> well, very good. Well, listen, a little bit of background. I think it's important to set the stage uh, about my involvement, my company's involvement, so you know uh, the motivations that are behind that, who it was behind it, because as your listeners uh, listen to what we're talking about here. It's good to know there's a little bit of connection there that brings us back to the military, the warriors, uh, the Crosswinds Foundation. First, a little bit about TechSouth. That's uh, the company that I belong to. TechSouth is a small contractor and they're located in Birmingham, Alabama. Now, I mentioned they're down close to where you're located. And I joined the firm nearly two decades ago, believe it or not, and I recently retired as the CEO. I feel very honored. 
uh, to have ascended to that position in the company, but uh, really enjoyed it, served as the president for about 10 years also. Now, let me be clear about my retirement, Andy. This is my second retirement. I'm a military veteran with 30 years in the Air Force, so I've got a strong connection yeah. to the Warriors, uh, uh, if you can imagine that. But, you know, when I left the military service uh, nearly 21 years ago, I think it was, I was looking for a way to continue serving my country. And I think it was Tech South that provided that opportunity. As you know, military folks got a lot of opportunities when they're working uh, out in industry. At the time, uh, Tech South was a small company, but it had a great reputation. They provided the military with all professional services and complex technical solutions dealing with data management for nearly 20 years. And being in the military, I used their services. So I personally saw they had a reputation of honorable service and I wanted to be a part of that culture. And that's really how I got started with them. Now that's the corporate foundation I told you about a little bit. It led me to work with Crosswinds, Bob, you and the entire team. And they had one goal in mind, and that's to help our veterans. Since Tech South had that, uh, what I call a wonderful relationship with our DOD friends, it promoted through the, I would say, hundreds of talented employees that we had that served uh, on the Tech South team. And they sat alongside our military clients and many of them, the warriors. You know, Andy, believe it or not, some of those folks who started with Tech South are still there 40 years later, if you can imagine, manage that. And many have military service. And you've met a lot of those folks down in Birmingham. Right. In some of the meetings that we've had. Some of them have been trained. Uh, you know, you were, at the, I, I remember the first, I'd met you before the meeting, you were at the first training we did on the Warrior Hope Manual. And we gave everybody this, uh, the leader guide. And, and you had a Tech South veteran. Uh, so a veteran uh, who was with Tech South there getting trained as well. Oh, you're absolutely right. But it's those warriors that work for us yeah. and going through programs like you had and this, what I call the company reputation and the culture, in addition to the relationships with the military that my company had, they're all very important. They're good characteristics or the greatest draw for me to get involved. And, you know, they were also the company's greatest reward as they did business. And I say reward is uh, Tech South earned that by treating the clients fairly and doing what they say they would do. And that is kind of getting to answer your question because you wonder if I'm ever going to answer that question. I certainly am. So Tech South owes much of their success to the military. And the government believed in the company and for 40 years, they provided that opportunity to serve. Now we're coming to your question. You asked, what led me to get my company involved, uh, Andy? That's important. You know, as I advanced in the company and got into the leadership roles, I took on a position of that responsibility and authority. Uh, I knew then that our success and good fortunes as a company I was due in great part to the great relationship with our military clients, and I wanted to find a way to show our appreciation. Now, here's how Tech, Tech South and I connected to the Crosswinds missions, to Bob Waldrop, to you and others on the team. And all of us wanted to give back to our warriors, and you had a great start. So my inspiration came in 2014. That's a date you probably remember, Andy. It was the Crosswinds uh, invited us to the uh, grand release of your groundbreaking film called Invisible Scars. Do you remember that? I, I, I do remember the, the release of that. That predated my time with Crosswinds. Yeah. But... You know, I'd known Bob for <laughs> probably, you know, I want to say like two decades. I don't know if that, that's probably accurate. It's, it's been a while. And he's, he'd always been uh, really one of those men that, uh, for people that are listening in that don't know, Bob is the founder uh, and the, the leader of the entire Crosswinds organization. Um, so I'd known him for a while, and he'd always been one of the guys I could go to if I needed advice when I was working at a nonprofit, working in a church, some other organization. So um, it, it, it was not, uh, you know, a, a unknown to me that that was happening, uh, if, if that makes sense. Oh, it um, does make perfect sense. And I know as the listeners are wondering a little bit more about what that was all about, 
visible scars is, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about it because knowing about that is really the inspiration to stay involved with the Crosswinds Foundation with you and the other members of the team. Uh, the film that we saw, I was absolutely blown away by the film for a variety of reasons. I'll go through a few of those. But for those listeners that weren't familiar with it, it was designed to show support for our warriors and caregivers and equally important families who are suffering from the uh, warrior, uh, the trauma of war and PTSD uh, specifically at this time. But you know what? I was deeply humbled to find uh, that I was just sitting in the theater uh, to find veterans who were interviewed and told their stories in the film. The humble part came when they were sitting in the theater alongside of me and the public. Right there they were. They weren't up in the things. These were not actors. Right. They were real warriors. That was a real reality check. And uh, if you have gone through with Bob and all the other folks, you'll remember uh, the reality of bringing those folks in and the folks who uh, uh, actually were the caregivers were also sitting in there. But they all had a story. What was really strong in that, it represented thousands of other warriors that are affected by PTS over the years. And it's at this point, I have to confess, uh, well, in spite of my 30 years in the uh, service, Andy, I was never one of the veterans suffering from PTS. So I didn't know much about it, or did I pay much attention because I was busy on other duties. So it was tough to relate, and it created for me a passive understanding of what this represented. So I got to the film. This was an eye opener for me. Uh, when you guys sent me the invitation, I thought, well, it's just a good place to go for an evening veterans and stuff. But it provided myself and other veterans and the public who attended much needed information about uh, PTS or post-traumatic stress. It uh, came from the uh, combat related duties for a lot of these folks who went off to serve in war for us. Now, it, here's what I was learning and I didn't think about it much, but PTS is not like a physical wound that you can see. It's appropriately named a hidden scar. Here's what I saw and learned from the film. And of course, the warriors that I met, they live with constant anxiety, something that we can't see all the time. Um, they tend to cut themselves off from civilian life and they often lose interest in things they used to love and take joy in. You know, on a moment's notice, they can flash into their awful experiences and resulting in outburst of angers. You know, the worst part is, and we've seen this in the interviews that uh, got into another uh, venture of yours, is that sometimes it leads to suicide and death. Right. Things that we don't always know about and don't get it because you can't see. It's not like the loss of a limb where you can feel sorry for somebody or somebody. But you know, in summary, this is where your uh, point comes in. I was hooked. The, this public viewing in Birmingham, and I might add, it was in a major theater. This was what was impressive about it. Uh, the whole public was coming to one of the big uh, theaters down there that show the mainstream uh, uh, events. It inspired me to bring my company as a sponsor to Crosswinds so we could help. You know, I wanted to distribute the video and the message to our military net, network. And, uh, you know, we have a large one uh, spending, uh, at that time, I think I was around the uh, 50 or 25 year point for the company and uh, it was time to give back. It was an easy sell, uh, Andy. It had a meaningful way to give back to our DOD clients by supporting our veterans with this worthy cause and knowledge about what's going on. You know, I'm not a doctor and I'm certainly not a psychologist, but I realized my role in supporting contribution to the wars was to spread understanding and promote interest. And I think that's what you're finding with a lot of folks. Is that, is, is that what you're finding, uh, Andy? I, I, th I think it is. I think a lot of it is kind of like your story where, you know, you, have, you, you, you didn't know a whole lot about, you know, what, what we were doing and what had started. And then you kind of get there and you're exposed to it. And then it just, it just makes sense. Um, because, you know, you, again, Tech South being a, a contractor that provides services to the military. Um, so, so you have, well, I mean, let's just call it what it is. You guys have built a business by serving the military and, you know, being paid to do that, which is how our economy works and is completely valid and is one of the great parts of this country. And, uh, and then when that military personnel um, finish their time of service, 
you know, a lot of your employees are military personnel or are connected, related to military personnel. So it, it seemed like for you guys, maybe a natural fit that, oh, hey, this is our past experience. You know, as a business, let's honor uh, this organization, the military that has made this business possible. Um, oh, and by the way, it's not just a business connection. Like these are people and we know these people and we know their story because we, we actually, you know, in a unique way are these people in some sense. So it starts giving language and connection to things that you already knew on a even bigger level were true, I, I think. And, and we continue bumping into a lot of people like that. Yeah, you do. You know, and I started to get involved up here. Well, I'd talk about a little bit more as we uh, relate to our uh, listeners out there. Uh, I'm in um, uh, right here in uh, uh, Montgomery County in Ohio. I've been working with some folks over the VA at uh, uh, Madison County. They have 1,500 veterans in that county alone. And wow. we looked at the, the fleet of cars they've got out there. Then I went and talked to the commissioner of that thing, and we created a close relationship. These are real, these are real issues that they're dealing with, and I think it's going to it, it, it's going to develop into as I'm retiring is to spread this knowledge out a little bit more, and we'll talk more about this. But you know, I said an awful lot about hidden scars because you asked the question, "How did I get started?" and that was really what drew me in. But that's yeah. not the only thing that kept me going. I have an unwavering support. Uh, for the organization, the crosswinds, and what you guys are doing. And I think uh, uh, part of it is on your chest right there, Freedom Tour, I called it. <laughs> yeah, that's one of our, uh, <laughs> in fact, Chris Turner, I, I, don't, I don't remember if we've aired him yet, or if he's... <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a Marine that, uh, you know, I, I mean, he's, he's no longer in the service, but, you know, they're, they're, one of their whole mantras, once a Marine, always a Marine. And uh, so now he's, he's doing a lot of work, you know, with, with us and using music really as the platform uh, there. So go, go well, ahead. I, I, yeah, no, I appreciate that. I've got great respect to Chris Turner and what he's doing in support of the Crosswinds Foundation. But, you know, it brings me back to another venture, and that was Songs of Hope. You know, that was a concert series. It was really well done. That's where, you know, Bob and the folks uh, found warriors out there, took them to Nashville, went down with some very professional songwriters, listened to the story, and they created a message out of that so that we could bring them all together, have a concert, bring in supporters and listening to the songs. Now it turned into a contest, of course, because all of them had it, but it was a good money-making thing to do one more thing. Spread right. the word. What's going on with all these people? What are these stories? And they went back to Vietnam. They went to back to what's going on in our conflicts uh, throughout the world uh, today. Of course, there was a follow-up to uh, um, the uh, PTSD. If you look behind me, that's the uh, honoring the code. That was the big uh, grand opening you had down there also. Another great film. But this is about moral injury and uh, those who struggle for more in Injury, this is a profounding damaging wound. It's characterized by a feeling that one has violated the conscience and moral values. It's much like PTS, uh, except it's suffered by many, it's still suffered by many and known by few. But you know, what's really important as I get into uh, the ventures with the, the Crosswinds folks and staying with them and, and keeping that thing as I departed Tech South in the military, is that the family is also affected, which brings us to the book, Hope for the Family. And, you know, I was looking at the cover of that book, Andy, I see you're a co-author in that book. So good job. <laughs> right. words. And I, I know the hope for the family, uh, the words that Bob wrote down and you edited come from experience. And they outline the struggles with PTS and moral injury in the home. Um, so this, uh, this, this was really profound. And a lot of folks that uh, I've given that book to uh, come back with good words on what it means uh, that other folks don't know so know about. So recently, though, uh, this was exciting because Bob brought his uh, filming team up uh, across when uh, filming team to arrange for family members to interview, describing the impact that loved one with uh, loved ones have uh, with PTS. Um, 
and described their experiences. And they were profound, the daughters and the mothers and the fathers of warriors. And one is a next door neighbor, his son was killed in uh, Afghanistan and while it's an arranging thing. And this is a little gruesome, but boy, it's important to know. We were sitting down with a young lady that she was there with a, a uh, service dog. And I asked her if that dog was hers. And she said, no, that belonged to my husband. I come to find out that actually uh, he took his life while she was holding on his hand. It was unexpected. It suffered from PTS, moral injury, things that he couldn't explain. And uh, that was one of those outbursts that just come and you can't control it, but it has the most devastating effect. But what a grounded lady she is for something that had such a traumatic experience. But when you hear about those things, I'm sitting in the back watching this filming go on. And Bob asked the question and he didn't have to say anything more. The story just came out. Now, yeah. The lady is now the mayor of one of the towns. She found a, uh, a mission in life. And uh, she's also one of the top skydiving uh, uh, team members for uh, the uh, good guys and gals and the fast tracks up here who also deal with warriors. And I'm a part of that. They yeah. bring warriors in every, every year. So it created a relationship to promote healing for those that... Uh, um that uh need to know more about it but you know you handed up you you held up the books there uh, uh that said centers of hope that was an inspiration also because here's here's a chance to get directly with the warriors and get facilitators who understand what they're going through can ask those leading questions and do something that's so hard for them to do and that's open up what's going on with the, in your mind what happens with right. this because they don't want to share it with anybody um, or they often don't want to share simply because they feel they're going to be put down. And if you don't understand something, I can tell you, hey, I lost my arm in the war. Oh, I'm so sorry. But I, I lost my moral, I, I lost my moral direction. I, I lost my ability to uh, uh, enjoy the things that I love in life. That doesn't resonate with everybody. So, but anyway, I hope that answers your question. I probably went a little longer. That's the beauty of editing. You can probably get that down to a minute or two. I'm probably not going to edit that. Probably just let that <laughs> go as it is. Uh, get, you know, and to kind of tie some of that together, you know, you, so you saw the first film, obviously, at the theater, um, Invisible Scars, which was about PTSD. Um, we, I've had Eugene Cuevas. He's the director uh, for right. all of these. I've had him on. And then the second film that you have there, I don't even have a poster like that. Like, I mean, like I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working for the organization. You'd think I've got the shirts. I don't even have, I don't have the poster uh, honoring the code about moral injury, which is really that uh, we, we've got an episode that we're sharing here uh, as well about the difference between PTSD and moral injury. And then the third film uh, that's, that's not yet released about the family um, that doesn't even have a title yet. Um, Eugene recorded a, a podcast episode with me and he kind of shared his working title on that. But you were very involved with uh, scheduling, you know, some of those interviews and connecting us with people uh, that really, as you just said, the, the woman who shared her story uh, recently when uh, the crews went up and, and shot that footage. A answer this question. It seems like so you, we haven't talked any about your military time and we can come back and do that another episode. I'd love for you to collect some thoughts on that at some point and share. Um, but when you're in the military, you have a mission. We, we talked about that on the first episode of this podcast uh, of season two, since we've do it, been doing it on video. And then you get out. A lot of people don't have a mission. You know, they're thrust back into civilian life. Uh, that can be different. They might be working somewhere where there's not a culture that's connected to the military as yours was uh, and, and is. Uh, but now you've retired from that and have, have stepped to the next chapter and have still kind of made a mission. How important is it for a warrior to have a mission, uh, to find a purpose, to fulfill a purpose after their military service? Well, after military service, I certainly found that with Tech South because we yeah. were giving back to the same people. In fact, the people that worked for me on active duty, when I went to Tech South, which was about a year later, 
Um, I worked for them. Same people, same names. Uh, you know, it was uh, it, it was uh, the senior master sergeant, the, the colonel, the airman. They all wanted to go by my rank, and I says, I don't have a rank. I'm a contractor. I'm here to support you now. So I had a mission, and I worked through that for 20 years. But when you retire from both of those, every day is a Saturday. But you have to have a mission, and it's important for those warriors to have a mission to say, listen, I'm important. Uh, what I say is important. What I do is important. And there's people that love me. I think there's two elements in that. Faith is a very important thing. And we can bring that through this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 programs, uh, a series of programs that you've all got going. And they can feel like uh, they've got someone they can talk to. Uh, they've got something they can see that demonstrates understanding that uh, what they're going through. They're not all alone in this. So I think it's very important. I think that's what you're getting at in this whole thing. It was yeah, important to me that I have a mission. Well, you know, you see it a lot of times. There, there are all these stats that have nothing to do with military at all, that when men retire, you know, they're fine when they're working. And then when they retire, like physically, they die. Like physically within a few years, if they're not doing something productive, it doesn't have to be work that they get paid for. But if they're not doing something like they, they just will. And I think, you know, when you've got a younger uh, man, it could be a woman as well, but I don't have that experience. You don't have that experience as a, as a female. When, when you step away from doing something every day that is so intense, it, you may not physically die because you still have all these years of, of health ahead of you, but, you know, emotionally, mentally, you can just will if you don't channel that energy, that purpose somewhere, you know, people were created, they were designed even back in the garden of Eden before the fall, Adam was created to work. He was created for a purpose. Um, that work, that purpose existed before fall, you know, work is not the result of sin. Uh, and the chaos of Genesis 3. Genesis 1 came first when he's created in God's image. He has a purpose. And I think so often, you know, we forget that. And, 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 it, and it's easy to walk away from, hey, you know, walking out a purpose really matters. And I think the military does a phenomenal job of awakening that reality in 18, 19 year old men and women that they were created for something. You know, we're not told that in high school, the educational system, you know, teaches facts and figures and, and whether it's teaching facts is even up for debate, depending on what book you're reading and what you're not allowed to read, right? And how they spin things, but they don't teach people that you were created for a purpose. When you get into the military, they awaken you to a common mission and then you get out. And if you don't have one, man, you've already been awakened to it. And when you see and feel like back to what you learned from Genesis 1, that you are created for some unique thing to steward it on this planet. If you don't find that post-military, uh, it becomes, I think, from what I'm seeing from talking to so many people, it becomes a very hard road, but once you tap into whatever that mission is, whatever that purpose is, um, it's almost the sky's the limit. Does that make sense? It is. Uh, and if you don't mind, I'll give you an example. No, please. Uh, first of all, people want to hear you, yeah. not me. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, every, every adventure in life is, uh, is a new start. Uh, you know, you graduate from her high school. It's a new start. Although you got all those accomplishments from getting through that thing. Then you join the military and you spend four years, six years or 30 years. But when you're done, you've got a new start and you've got to go someplace. Maybe you go become a contractor and spend 20 years. But when you finish, you got to have a new start. Um, Mine was a faith, uh, doing things for the church, and I joined the disaster response team. I went on my first mission uh, uh, three weeks ago and will go on my next mission. What was that? It was to Benton, um, Kentucky, and we stayed in a dormitory-type yeah. living in a church of Christ, and we really enjoyed it, uh, but we had 70 other people from around the country as far away as uh, Texas and Maine, all down there in Benton, Texas, and our design was to help clean up 
for folks that didn't even know we were coming. Some of them didn't even know how they got on a list to be helped. But uh, there I was uh, on a new mission asking myself, where is my value? And I found it. Uh, it was walking in the uh, shoes of Jesus, doing things that you'd have to ask yourself. I'm standing in a big field. The temperature is below zero right now. I've got 12 other people. And we were asked that day to show up about eight o'clock and clean up. Now, the, what we're cleaning up is just sticks stuck in the ground that have been blown off the and we had to pick them up, put them in a big pile so somebody could carry them away and they could put a new foundation in for a house. And I was falling through the ice. My, I was cold. And I'm saying, what is the value of this? When I'm looking across the street and I see another big field with a bulldozer that's doing in 10 minutes what we're going to take seven hours to do. But when I got done, we all asked ourselves, uh, where was your God moment? And it was right there in what I was doing. It was serving a purpose for some individual that had no other way of getting it done. Yeah. And we did it. Uh, and we all agreed with that uh, as we all had God moments in that. So that. That's kind of the experience. And now I'm going on my second mission to Waverly, Tennessee, where now they've gone through the floods that they had down there. Now we're rebuilding. So we're going to go in and put in floors and walls and things like that. Different mission, but uh, nonetheless. Then you talk to the people and you realize when you're hugging them and they've got more trauma than you've ever experienced, not just the loss of their home, but the other things that they were experiencing and learn about them because of the tears and the, and what every warrior wants to feel is an outlet for everything they're feeling. And now you see folks that it's all pent up and they give it to you. Now you have a mission to console that individual for a short period of time. So you don't have to go look for these things. They're there. They'll present themselves and you take care of it. Sometimes that's your mission. So uh, that was just one thing of many uh, that we're working yeah. on. Well, staff, I man, I appreciate uh, you so much for uh, everything Tech South is, uh, you know, your organization or a previous organization at this point has blessed, you know, Crosswinds and the, the mission that we've engaged in uh, so much. You guys have blessed us financially, blessed us relationally. Uh, so I appreciate you leading that group of people uh, towards us. You guys have trained leaders through there, uh, all kinds of things. I appreciate you personally as well. Uh, I mean, you know, you you could have walked off from Tech South, rode off into the sunset, um, but, you, you know, you you walked off from Tech South, maintained those relationships, also maintained uh, the relationship you have with us and, you know, going on to others. It, it's not missed on me that one time, it, I know you would never tell this story, um, and you may ask me to edit it out. I, I don't know that I would if you asked me to, but just seeing you so connected to the people where there was a young woman uh, even on one of our group Zoom calls when we're doing the meetings, and she was talking about, hey, I'm I'm a warrior, but, you know, my husband, he's the family member, and we're, we're doing warrior training with warrior hope or also doing the families at the same time and you know how can we get some books and i remember you piping up and just going hey i will send you the books bob give me the bill mail her the books <laughs> and, and and i'm going to tell you this because here's the end of it uh is here's the end of that story well not the end of it really probably the beginning is th where where they they are this is this is andrea I, i've recorded an episode with her where they are uh, that group um, that you that you helped personally is now uh, one night they're doing the the warriors and the families at the same time. They don't meet every week for group. Um, they do a session and then the next week they meet, but they do something that's that's fun. Like they get together, they got together to watch the Super Bowl, or they get together to go bowl, or they get together at a at a bakery or they, like they just, and then the next week they're back to class and then it's fun and then it's class. And here's the result if, if in the area where they are, the calls for suicides and crisis have gone down um, simply because people are connecting. And why are they connecting? They're connecting because they have one, a great leader that's there. She went through uh, she trained with the Rangers. She's a phenomenally skilled leader and she's got other yeah, people around her, awesome. but she has the resources. She's got the tools she needs because you guys yeah. sent her the tools. Yeah. Um, you know, and you had, you had no idea. You're just, Hey, I'm just going to keep helping and blessing people. And uh, so personally you're doing things 
just like in the military, when you were supplying, you know, Air Force, you're supplying cover for people, you're supplying resources for people that are going to fly planes that you're never going to see, they're going to protect people that you never see that are going to, you know, it's it, it all just fits together. Everybody does their little part of the mission. You have no idea in the bigger picture how things are going down. And so, um, man, you're one of the guys that believed in the whole Crosswinds mission early on, and I appreciate, you know, everything that you continue to do. With that, that's a well, long way. Uh, we appreciate uh, you. Andy, let me summarize if I could, and I'll go back to something. You summarize this and sign us off. How about that? that? I'll give you the last word. Well, good. Uh, and, and you know, whenever we have problems in the country, as you can see some of that now, we go to our military to get help. Uh, they go off and defend us and bring us our freedom. Yeah. And uh, what Bob said in one of his things is, says we are number one at preparing our soldiers for combat, but we have a long ways to go on helping them to come home. And we have to do that. And that's one of the reasons I led Tech South to the Crosswinds Foundation and the companies like Tech South to step up to the need. You might ask the question, <laughs> what would you say to other leaders out there who may or may not be veterans who you might feel drawn towards this type of endeavor? I think those were your words with a big question mark at the end, Andy. But it's simple, get involved. We have leaders of all walks of life, military, corporate, social, family groups, et cetera. And no matter where you can, where you go, you can find a leader. And the one thing we all have in common as leaders is our freedom. And we also have our military to protect and defend this freedom. It probably isn't much of a stretch to see the connection and the value. It takes organizations like Crosswind and of course, Tech South and individuals to help others get involved. The thing uh, you most enjoyed with our involvement or the biggest surprise in it at all, at all is that it does work. So I appreciate your time and bringing me aboard. I hope uh, you can edit some of this stuff. Uh, I hope I met our time for here's at 34 minutes into this. Uh, this probably not going to edit that. Probably just let it roll. Let it roll. There you go. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today on the Warrior Hope Podcast. If you got something from this, and I trust that you did, I would love for you to leave a comment down below if you're watching on YouTube or on our website or uh, share this on social media and just leave us one of your takeaways. Tag us. Let us know what you are gleaning from and how this is helping you or someone that you know uh, move forward. As always, I want to bring my top three takeaways and share them with you. Here is number Number one, you never know who you are helping. Now, in the military, we kind of alluded to it that so often uh, there are so many things in the pipeline. You might be doing one thing that is affecting someone else to help them do their job, that allows someone else to do their job, that allows someone else to do their job to serve someone that you never actually see. You never know who you're impacting. And as we got to the end of this podcast, I really wanted to share that story with staff that by him just buying those books, he had no idea that in that small effort, he was impacting people in another city who he's never seen actually bring down, I believe, the suicide rate, the desperation rate in that area. The same is true for you, the same is true for me. We never know just by our small actions every single day uh, who you are affecting that may even be empowered to affect someone else, to affect someone else, you never see the ripple effect. Uh, my takeaway number two is this, honor and stay connected. So Tech South was a business that is a contractor to the, the military. And when staff uh, left the military, he goes and works for this company, rises up through the ranks in the company as he had in the military, uh, but then turns and serves the men that were once, same name, same person, that were once under his command. Now he is serving them in honor and it just always works. Stay connected, continue honoring the people that are around you. Number three is look up. The mission is close by. So often I think we wait for the next big, great thing and then we get desperate when we don't see it. Now, rest assured, I do believe that there's something incredible, something amazing out there for you uh, that maximizes your skills, the purpose for which you were designed, for which you were created. At the same time, sometimes the mission is as simple as a need that someone has, like sticks from a storm in their yard and going and tangibly expressing love to that person by doing the action that needs to be done. There are people around, all around you that need to be served. The mission 
is right there, present every single day. Lift your head, look up. There's someone standing before you that you can bless in that moment. We don't know what's going to happen a week from now, a year from now. We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we do know what happens today. And today is a great day to look up, to express your mission, to bless someone else that's right in front of you. I'm Andy Jenkins. I'm signing off. As always, our mission here is to connect warriors to their mission, to help them do that. The obstacles that we see most often or isolation and unresolved hurt, unprocessed pain of the past. And we really want you to find that mission because it is going to align with your purpose. And there are always people that are going to be affected by that. Those people are your family, your friends, fellow soldiers who had your six in the back. Now you have their six. They still have yours. You still need to have theirs. Let's do this thing together. I'll be back next week with another guest on the Warrior of Hope podcast. Thank you for joining me.